Hey everybody, welcome back to the Build Show Network. Steve Basic Architect here, and I thought today we would talk about exercise, and I would do about 300 pull-ups here for you. No, I'm just kidding. Today, we're gonna to talk about raised heel trusses, or energy trusses as some people would call them. So yes, death-defying uh, climb. I'm at the top of the ladder here, you can see. Leaning up just so I can bring you that raised heel truss right here, close, I can reach in, and we can talk about it. Anyways, all right, enough with the jokes. Let's talk about energy trusses. Why do we do it? We'll go back to the studio and we'll talk about ice damming and we'll talk about all those effects. But basically what we want to do is we want to capture a little bit more insulation and space between the top plate and the underside of the roof sheet. So how do we do that? We need to push the top cord of the truss up. So, you can do it two ways. One is the way we did it here. You can see they basically just slide a two by six, or in some cases it's a two by eight. It's called a slider. And it basically slides in there, it splits the bottom cord and the top cord, and it provides that additional space. In this case here, we talked about our, uh, we designed these trusses so that there was a 10 inch heel height. And you'll see what that means when we go, to, go back and talk about the drawings. But a couple things, people always say, hey, why don't you make that 18 inches if we're gonna do all this insulation? Well, remember, on the outside, that overhang has a relationship to the top of the windows. And the further I push that away, the more it exposes my windows to the rain and puts my windows at a risk. So as an architect and, and builders, there's a delicate balance between risk and reward, right? So. 10 inches moves us out of that ice damming and gets us into a, uh, a good position thermally, but it also doesn't challenge us from a water management problem. And you know, if you see, saw my other videos, you know that water management, that's number one on my list. Water is the number one killer of buildings. So we'll deal with that first. We'll solve for insulation later. Anyways, here it is, raised heel truss. If you're not familiar with those components of the truss, the piece that runs across the ceiling, that's called the bottom cord, the piece that runs the slope of the roof up here, that's called the top cord, that's what makes up the trusses, the members that are in between, those are called web members that make up the truss, and then the piece that slides in here, that's called the slider. Let's head back to the studio and we'll talk about uh, raised steel trusses a little bit more. All righty. So Back at the studio, got a good friend, Big Red, got a detail here. We're talking raised heel trusses. It's uh, very commonly uh, overlooked uh, importance, but uh, carries a lot of weight in the uh, overall efficiency and design of projects. So let's uh, dive into the details. Like I said, we got Big Red here and uh, stock raised heel trusses. All right. So got our wall section detail here. You can see this is the top plate. Level top plate here, top of the wall. You can see our truss here. So there's the bottom cord coming in there. The vertical bottom cord. That vertical goes uh, right there. This is the top cord coming down. That top cord goes all the way down. That, and then that gets cropped there. And then there's infill webs uh, to the trusses. But uh, what we really care about is this dimension here. So if we extract that all the way up and it touches the top cord get that dimension there, we'll just call it D. And what D is, D equals heel height. Heel height is the dimension from the bottom of the bottom cord to a vertical projection to the top of the top cord. In this case here for this project, that equaled nine inches. It had to do with the low sloping roof, the 
relationship of the soffit here to the windows and what's left over here for dimension. So there's a lot of geometry that plays a role there, but typically D is somewhere between 8 to 12 inches for me. Um, I don't think I've ever done it higher. Um, and even though I drew it as a vertical member here, a lot of times, and you, you can see it in the photo, what they do is they take that top cord and they split it from the bottom cord by simply inserting here, you know, two by six. And the trust companies that I've dealt with in the past, they've called that the slider because it's just the piece that slides in and like a wedge. And what it does is it basically splits the bottom cord from the top cord because typically that relationship is such that you have the bottom cord like this and the top cord goes like that and that comes in and then that makes your soffit. So there's the heel height but I've also heard this dimension here from here, a perpendicular projection. And someone once called that the throat dimension. I don't know where that comes from, but whatever. That's what I remember it. And, you know, when you do the conventional trusses without putting a slide or a raised heel in, that throat dimension is um, probably around four inches, which is next to nothing, especially when you introduce a vent strip for a vented attic assembly. Then that four inches is down to two and a half or something like that. And, you know, because of that light dimension there, we get a lot of ice dams and the light there, and just pure inefficiency, because we can't get a whole lot of insulation in two inches. I mean, packing in cellulose at two inches, you're probably at an R8 or so. It doesn't even meet the same R value as the wall here. So you typically push that up, and even at nine inches, that's getting us, I don't know, maybe about seven and a half on the vertical here. By the time we get in here, we're probably true to that nine inches. Um, so, you know, averaging it out somewhere in here, you're probably at about R30 to 32 at the nine inch heel height using the cellulose in there. So you can see that that from, you know, R8 here, we're at roughly 4X in uh improving that. And, you know, the slider here, I don't know exactly what it was on this project. I know in, in previous projects, we, we did that for a production home builder where I did all their designs. And the slider detail, I think it was probably like an additional five or six dollars a truss. So it's not one of these outrageous numbers. You know, you're building, I don't know, let's say 40 trusses at five bucks. So it's an extra 200 bucks or so. And then you're going to get a pay for a little bit more insulation there, but you're going to start limiting these problems of ice dams and such because you're keeping that um, ventilation space cooler and we're not losing that heat, right? So the problem with creating the ice dams in that dimension is it's, it's a heat loss calculation. If I only have two inches and I'm battling it with R8, I'm going to lose a significant amount of heat in this direction. Whereas if I'm at R32, that's going to get held back and uh, there'll be a little bit of pushback from the insulation. So I'm not getting as much heat energy up here at the underside of that roof deck where it's melting snow and turning it into water. And you have this cold surface down here where that water, by the time it gets out here, it just keeps building up like that. And next thing you know, you get this pool of water in there. And, uh, you know, eventually water wants to find its level and it starts pushing back and pushing its way up under the shingles and such. So that's the ice dam problem. 
but just in general, the Raytheon Trust helps you battle for um, energy efficiency there. So anyways, Raised Hill Trust, it's a good thing. Always get it in those drawings. Like I said, you know, we're in, in climate zone five up here. So I would say that eight to 12 inches is good. If you're moving into, you know, passive house or the like, then yeah, I think I've done a couple of these that are maybe in the 12 to 16 inch range of raised heel trusses. So anyways, slide that slider in between the cords, push them apart, get that effective R value up and uh, let's start building good houses. All right. So that's the dealio on raised heel trusses. So <clears throat> I know you didn't get to see me do my 300 pull-ups. Um, just for the record, probably the most uh, pull-ups I've ever done was probably in like a 75, 80 range. Yeah, it's never good at pull-ups. Push-ups, there was a day, I don't know, 250-ish. So those days are long gone. Anyways. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, raised heel trusses, always a great little topic when we get to talk about framing and how it affects the plan. So if you're looking for more, we got all of us on the Build Show Network throwing up free info. Go check it out. Literally hundreds and hundreds of videos. Go check them out, especially if you watch them seven times. You're in the thousands. There's a great series there, the Build Show Build, where Jake and I walk you through the whole series of construction for our Hilltop Arrow project. Great little video. Austin editor put it all together for us. Did a great job. Certainly uh, worth binge watching this weekend. So go check it out. Um, if you're looking for more, Instagram, Steve Basic Architect. Posting stuff up there regularly. And uh, you get to see all this good information there and uh, see it live. Because usually when I'm posting, it's a photo I took the day or two before. So. It's all good stuff. All good stuff happening there. Lastly, enjoying Jake and Peter Yost and myself on the Unbuild It Show. Yes, the podcast where we talk about everything building. So anyways, search it out. It's on all the uh, audio channels and it's up there on YouTube. So Unbuild It. Go check it out. And until next time, long live our buildings. <laughs>